Log houses are not just easy to build. If they're done right, they're naturally cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So, first, the newly arrived settlers looked for a flat piece of land for the foundation with a nearby creek and, most importantly, an easily defendable area. Once you've selected a similar place, you need to make a dirt base. Now, the pioneers also placed huge rocks along the perimeter of the house. For bed floor ventilation, they used to leave small spaces between the stones. This prevented the wood floor from molding. Prior to starting the construction, the pioneers would have prepared the logs. Log buildings need straight pines with as few branches as possible. Traditionally, the trees were felled in winter when the trees were sleeping and the juice and moisture content is very low in them. They chopped perpendicular traverses with a normal axe and then cut the thick pieces up horizontally on each side. Then the leftover pieces were chopped with a broad axe. To ensure even drying, bark was cut off with a draw knife. The pioneers used a corner notch to join the logs together. They stuffed the spaces with oakum, wool, or moss, depending on what was available at the time. The corner notch was carved with an axe, one square of the log's thickness deep and a half inch on both sides. The upper log was then carved to match the lower log and put into place. More moss was added above the log, and after they placed the second log, any excess moss was cut off. To strengthen the walls, logs are fastened together with dowels. When the dowels are hit, you need to be sure to leave a gap at the bottom so the pegs won't carry the weight when the logs sink. The door and window holes are drilled with a 2-inch brace, and then the excess wood is cut out. By the end of this day, the log should be at the height of the windows. You will then have to cut off the logs where the windows will be. When you put the shaft in place, you must first stuff it with moss or wool because later you won't have access to this area. When the walls were high enough, the pioneers would make a notch about halfway through the thickness of the wall. This is where the timber beam would be placed. Traditionally, logs were lifted using ramps and ropes. Logs were then placed on both sides above the ceiling, and then the excess wood was cut off using a triangular frame. Three girders were then placed across both sides of the roof to sustain the roof. Beam-like roof trusses were supported by ridge beams, sidewalls, and two ceiling joists. Thinner supporting beams were placed sideways, and this is how the project should look at this stage. A normal shingle roof is thoroughly threefold. The first shingles are short with one-third of a full-length shingle, and the second layer has only half-length shingles, and the third layer is only full shingles. Four logs are fixed on the ground to sustain the floor. The space between them is filled with dirt, but the center is left empty to be used as a small root cellar. This is where most of the food supplies will be stored. The floor will have a trap door so it can be easily accessed. Wood boards are then arranged on the floor. They often added sawdust for better insulation. The ceiling was built using two layers of boards. 